Hello, beloved friends. By the time you see this video, I will no longer be the pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Sterling, Illinois. The church and I will both be in a time of transition as they transition to a time of searching for who their next pastor will be. And I'm sure that even now God is preparing that person. And I will be in transition to my new call as the executive presbyter of the Presbytery of Southern Kansas. So I am recording a series of six sermons about the story of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and his brother Esau and their wives and their families. It's a great story, kind of like a soap opera in these six episodes. And I hope that you'll stay with us in these weeks of transition time for the church to hear all of these six sermons. As always, if you'd like to join the congregation in person, worship is at 410 Second Avenue, Sterling, Illinois, at 930 each Sunday morning. They will welcome you as warmly as they possibly can because that's the kind of congregation they are. I'm sad to be leaving, but you will be glad to come and join them if you ever decide to do that. Meanwhile, we do appreciate your continued support, your prayers, your contributions and donations, and you can always give to the church by using the QR code or by um, going to our website, www.firstpresbyterianstirling.org and clicking on the donate button. Thank you for your presence. And I will ask for your prayers for both the congregation and for me in this time of change. God bless you. And remember you are loved and you are worthy and you are enough. Now, about this series, back in 2011, an article appeared in my online news, and it's what it, here's what it said. Diehard soap opera fans are hitting the streets for demonstrations and protests, a barrage of websites, picket lines, and an ad in a Hollywood trade magazine urging Disney to reconsider or sell the soaps to another company willing to keep them going. Agnes Nixon, the 83-year-old creator of both One Life to Live and All My Children, acknowledged it could be an uphill battle, but Mrs. Nixon said she's grateful for the fans' efforts and is planning a finale that leaves open the possibility of continuation. This series is a lot like All My Children. Now that year, in 2011, the central character of Erica Kane on All My Children, played by Susan Lucci since 1970, had been held captive by an imposter, also played by Mrs. Lucci. The plot was expected to be resolved by the end of the series. Now, just in case you think your pastor's research is not entirely serious, I want you to know this story ran in the venerable Wall Street Journal. There are lots of theories about why soap operas and serial stories seem to have gone the way of buggy whips and victrolas, and Chief among them is the fact that fewer people are at home to watch television during the daytime. But the soaps have been shown to offer a benefit to viewers. Yeah, who knew there could be social good in what's called a social drama, a serial drama performed originally on a daytime radio or television program and chiefly characterized by tangled interpersonal situations and melodramatic or sentimental treatment. The main characters that, that define soap operas are uh, characteristics that define soap operas are an emphasis on family life, personal relationships, sexual dramas, emotional and moral conflicts, coverage of topical issues in familiar domestic interiors with only occasional excursions to new locations. Each episode ends with a promise that the storyline will be continued in our next episode. These stories are not just drippy melodramas. 
Oxford University, yep, the Oxford in England, has produced soap operas for worldwide consumption for educational purposes. The executive producer, John Marks, said, storytelling has been a powerful mechanism for change in many cultures around the world, so we wanted to use soap opera, the modern equivalent of storytelling, to see if we could address issues of prejudice, hatred, ethnic rivalries, gender inequality, and a range of other topics. Our goal, he said, is to use popular culture to make a profound impact on the attitudes and behaviors of a mass audience. In a manner of speaking, the stories of the Bible, particularly those in the book of Genesis, are like serial dramas, like soap operas. The stories of the Bible address all of those issues and more, and over the next few weeks, we're going to experience a narrative much as we would see in a serialized drama through the medium of these stories which educate, illuminate, and entertain, stories that address family life and personal relationships and sexual dramas and emotional and moral conflicts, stories which resonate with our own contemporary experiences as individuals, families, communities, and even nations. In these stories, we learn our history and our destiny and our humanity, and our biblical version of storytelling is like a soap opera, but it begins thousands of years before Christ in what are now Turkey and Syria. And if you stay tuned for the two epilogue sermons after these six, you'll find that it ends in Egypt where it began. I hope you'll tune in for all of the episodes.